happy Wednesday to you. Yes, today is Wednesday. Can you make that? It's your W or your three. And you just make it in a circle like this, like a full day. Happy Wednesday to you. I'm so glad that you're here. We are going to be all about some very silly books, but also about books with strategies. So I'm very excited for today's Miss Kim story time. So let's, before we let our story time magic into the room, Let's do a couple of shout outs to get started. I want to say a big hello and shout out to Riley. Hi, Riley. Riley's just started to join us and she is so into all of these books that we've done. So thank you for your encouragement and your enthusiasm. Also, I want to say a big hi to Annie. Hi, Annie. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you brought your grown up. I know your grown up was really into all of these special stories that we read. And then Lorelai, oh, Lorelai, of course, always bringing the singing voice to the game. So I appreciate you, and I just love your singing voice. Peyton and Ashton, hi! Peyton and Ashton just found out about Miss Kim's story time, and I'm so glad that they did because it is just so much fun, and I just love sharing all these wonderful songs and stories with our friends. And then I want to say hi to Asti again. Hi, Asti. She's been here almost every story time, and I can feel her love through the camera. And then I also wanted to say a big hi to Danica and her grown-ups, Mark and Wendy. Thank you for joining us and spreading the love. And then another big hi to Dan Welch. He's a really good friend of mine, and he's got two friends, Ryan and Paige, and I'm hoping that they are enjoying our wonderful story. Without further ado, let's let story time magic into the room. Do you remember the word? It is story. Oh my goodness, where are my manners? Nate, did I remember my manners today? I almost forgot to say hello to all of our other friends. So let's do that first. Let's break out those waves. Hello, grown-ups. So wonderful to see you, kiddos. I'm so happy we're all here. Readers, I'm glad you came to read. Oh, I'm so glad you came to read. So now we're ready to let story time magic into the room. Do you remember the words? Did you bring your singing voices today? Did you bring your jazz hands? Did you bring your listening ears? Click those in. Here we go. It is story time right now yay story time yay story time yay it is story time right now yay let's read our what our looks no our shooks no our books I got my jazz hands out. All right, well the first book that we are going to read today is about mean, nasty, downright disgusting, but invisible germs. Now, what does invisible mean? It means that you can't see it, but it's there. It sure is. You can't see it, but it's there. That's what invisible means. And that's what these guys are. Can you see these guys? These are all different kinds of germs. And did you know this fun fact? You can get rid of these germs. These are germs that can make you feel sick. Germs that can give you an earache. Germs that can give you a sore throat. Germs that can give you a headache. Germs that can give you a fever. Germs that can give you a tummy. It can give you the throat. But you know, there is something that you can do to get rid of those germs. We don't need these germs in our life, heck no. So let's find out what we can do about these germs. Producer Nate is gonna come over when he's ready. He's very busy right now doing some behind the scenes work, but he's gonna come over and partner read with me. So this is a book called Mean, Nasty, Dirty, Downright Disgusting, but germs. 
this is a non-fiction book. Now, what does that mean, non-fiction? That means that it's true. That means that it's for reals. That means that it is real life stuff that you can use, real life strategies you can use to help you in your world. And here comes Mr. Nate. Hello, Mr. Nate, producer Nate. I'm so glad you came to join us. Hello, Mom. All right. Did you know that fun fact? That I am Nate's mom. Do you remember how we do mom with our JSS? Mom. That's right. All right. Look at those mean, nasty, downright disgusting, but invisible germs, Nate. I hope we don't get any of those on our jazz hands. Let's find out about this. I'm an invisible right. germ. Oh, see, he's covering his hand. He's covering his face because he's pretending to be an invisible germ. So you're not supposed to see him right now. Well, this is my friend Beth. Fun fact, she has the same name as my sister. This is Beth. She's that many. How many is that? Five. Hi, that's right. She's five. Can you make a five? That's right. It's like a high five, isn't it? And it's one, two, three, four, five fingers. Five. One day, when Beth was at school, painting the most beautiful rainbow. Do you remember the colors in our rainbow? Red, orange, shiny, yellow, green, blue, purple too. All the colors that we know up in a rainbow. So she was painting the most beautiful rainbow when a mean, nasty, downright disgusting, but invisible germ got on her jazz hand. The kind that can give you an earache. Did you bring your ears today? Did you have them both in? And if you could see it, because we can't see those germs, right? Because they're, that's, what's the word? Invisible. If we could see it, maybe it would look like me. This. This. See, look at that germ. And look what Nate's doing. He's doing what we would do if we had an earache, right? You'd hold on to your ears and you'd say, owie, owie, owie. Ear aches are no fun. Look at this germ. He's got really big ears. That's how you know that this is the germ that gives you a what? An earache. He looks like an elephant. Doesn't he? Or a big mouse? Yeah. Well, the next germ came along while Beth was building a space station with rocket ships with her wooden blocks. So she's playing a little five, four, three, two, one, blast off. It's another rocket ship fun. And then a mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible germ got on her jazz hand. And this is the kind that can give you a headache. Have you ever had a headache before? A headache. And if you could see it, it could look like this. This, that's right, look at that. And look what Nate's doing. He's holding his head like he has a headache. His body is talking to him. And his body is saying, I have a headache. That's right. And see how what it looks like? It looks kind of like a hammer. Doesn't it feel like a hammer is pounding your head when you have a headache? It does. I think that's why that germ may look like that, if we could see it. But we can't because it's what? Invisible. Well, while Beth was reading the most fascinating story, a mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible term, got on her jazz hand. It's the kind, and if you could see it, it's the kind that gives you a sore throat. Have you ever had a sore throat? It's right here on the inside, doesn't it? And if you could see it, it would look like this. Wow, look at that long throat. Yep, a long throat. And look what Nate's doing. He's holding his throat like it's an ouchie. An ouchie on the inside. His body is telling him that he's got an ouchie on the inside of his throat. Well, next, Beth was pretending to be her grown-up, right? 
because she looks very fancy. When she was doing that, a mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible germ got on her jazz hand. It's the kind that can give you a temperature, right? A fever, a temperature. And if you could see it, because we can't see it, right? Because it's invisible. If you could see it, it would look like this. Oh, that doesn't it look like a sun? And is the sun really cold or really hot? It's super hot. And that's how you feel when you have a temperature, when you have a fever. You feel very hot, right? Well, then last but not least, the worst, most horrible, mean, nasty, downright disgusting, but what friends? Invisible germ got on her jazz hand while she was driving this big dump truck. And it's the kind that gives you the throw-ups, the throw-ups. And if you could see it, it would look like this. This. Oh, look at Nate. Doesn't he look like he looks in a little green, right? Looks that's Ooh, kind, of, kind of how you feel. You feel a little green when you're feeling like you have going to have the throw-ups. <laughs> now, guess what? Best hands are covered with mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible germs. Thank goodness Beth knows what everybody needs to know. How to get rid of those mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible germs. Well, before lunchtime, Beth washed her hands with lots of soap and water. Let's practice that. There's even a special song that you can sing. So you want to rub your hands like Nate and I are doing right now. We're going to rub our jazz hands together. We want to rub in between our fingers. Do the backs. Do the fronts. Do the fingers. Right? And then you can sing this really fun song. And when you do that, you'll notice you'll be making a great big bubble mountain. Let's do it. It goes like this. And a one. And a two. And a three. This is the way we wash our hands and make bubbles. Make bubbles. This is the way we make bubbles. So we are so mean. So we are so green. No. So we are so what friends? Clean. And that's so important. Make sure you get all of it, because you know what? Germs don't like bubbles. They don't care for bubbles at all. They're like okay? cats. They don't like water. No, kind of like that. Germs don't like bubbles. So let's see if our friend Beth can get rid of these germs by washing her hands and making lots of bubbles, making a great big bubble mountain. Well, she couldn't hear those germs while she was making her what? Great big bubble mountain. But she couldn't hear them. But while she rubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and rubbed, what did the germ say, Nate? Yikes! Scream the germ that gives you an earache as it went swirling and whirling down the drain. What did the other germ say, Nate? Foil it again. Shouted the germ that gives you a headache as it went swirling and whirling down the drain. What did the other germ say, Nate? Whoa! Cried out the, the germ that gives you a sore throat as it went swirling, whirling down the drain. What did the other germ say? Oh no! Screamed the germ that gives you a fever as it went swirling, whirling down the drain. Now, do you think that was the end of all those horrible germs? Do you see your hands? Well, they still look pretty wet because look how drippy they are. And then, oh, do you see that germ? He's hiding. Which germ is that? Is that the last germ left? And that is the meanest, nastiest, Greenest. downright disgusting.
disgustingest and most invisible germ of all. And which one is that, Nate? The one that gives you the throw-ups. It was hiding out on the palm of Beth's jazz hand. This is the palm of your hand, right? I'm wondering what Beth needs to do because that yucky germ is hanging on tight. Well, did you know this one, fact? Germs like wet places. And Beth's hands were wet from washing. Germs like warm places. And our bodies are always warm. 98.6 degrees to be exact. But being the wonderfully intelligent child that Beth is, she knew all about what germs like and don't like. So she carefully dried her hands with her paper towel. Now, did she just bunch it up? No, she had to carefully dry her hands and then she can ball up and as I like to say with my preschoolers, you make it into a ball and then you shoot and score into the waste paper basket. She couldn't hear it, but the germ that gives you the throw up said, I'll be back as Beth threw it away into the trash can. Beth picked up her peanut butter and banana sandwich with her clean, germ-free jazz hands and took a bite and said, simply delicious. The end. So what can you do to get rid of those mean, nasty, dirty, downright disgusting, but invisible germs? You sing that hand-washing song. You make your great big bubble mountain. You rinse all of those bubbles and all of those germs will go whirling, swirling down the drain. Then you gotta make sure, don't forget that last step. Get a paper towel, get a big fluffy towel, dry off your hands super well. The backs, the fronts, in between your fingers. And then you've got some nice, mean jazz hands. Nice, mean jazz hands, right Nate? That's right, mean jazz hands? Green jazz hands, clean jazz hands, right arm. All right, now, I know a lot of us have been home for a long time, and I bet a lot of us are missing our friends, and our school, and our teachers. So I thought this would be a kind of a silly book to read, to talk about how it feels to be bored. Now, I'm sure we've all felt bored from one time or another. And when I feel bored, I always want to try and think of what I can do to get myself out of that bored space. I can do something. I can imagine something. I can create something. Well, let's find out what this friend decides to do. Nate and I are gonna partner read as a team today. I'm going to play her, our friend. Nate's going to play another character in this book. But this is a book by, it's called I'm Bored, and it's by Michael Black. He's the author. What does the author do? The author writes the book. The author writes the book. Hi ho, library yo, the author. The writes the book, and the illustrator is someone different, Debbie Oki. And what does the illustrator do? The illustrator draws the pictures. The illustrator draws the pictures. Hi ho, librario! The illustrator draws the pictures. That's right. I'm bored. Can you show us your bored face? Mm. It's kind of a pouty face, isn't it? Well, look at this friend. She's got her, she's got that face going on, that bored face, and she says, I'm bored. Bored, blah, so bored. Hey, a potato. A potato? What am 
I supposed to do with a potato? Bonk. Ow! I'm bored. The potato's bored too. You want to do something? Sure. What do you like to do? I don't know. I like flamingos. Well, that's random. There are no flamingos around here. Well, that's disappointing. I'm bored. How can a potato be bored? Because <clears throat> I have to hang out with a kid. Kids are boring. <gasps> Did he just say that? He just said kids are boring. <gasps> what are you talking about? Kids are fun. Huh? Prove it. Oh, I guess she has to prove it. We can turn cartwheels. Boring. We can skip. Boring. Or spin around in circles until we get so dizzy we almost Row up. But 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 up boring. Oh my goodness, there's no pleasing this potato. Kids can play games and do ninja kicks. Boring. Boring. Um, um, kids can walk on our hands, see? Boring. You know what else kids can do? Kids can imagine stuff. What kind of stuff? Like, like this. Now I'm a famous ballerina. Boring. Well, well, now I'm a lion tamer with the most ferocious lion in the whole wide world. Boring. Oh yeah. Well, now I'm a fairy princess with my own castle and dragons and unicorns and all kinds of magical stuff. Snoring. Well, 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 kids can swing. Boring. Kids can jump. Boring. Kids can fly. Dun, 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 dun. Boring. Kids can do anything. Boring. Look at this kid. She's, she's piled on a top of laundry pretending she's on a mountain. You're like, Yee -yee. She's pretending to be a scientist. Boring. She's pretending to be a rock star. Boring. Oh, she made a special pirate ship. B -b 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 boring. And now she's playing monster. Boring. 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 Oh my boring. And now she's even dressed up as a potato. Boring. Wow. This potato is really bored. How can you possibly think kids are born when we can do all this cool stuff and think all these amazing thoughts and be anything we want to be? I'd rather be a kid than a potato. Anything. Huh. She goes stomping off leaving that boring potato there. Hey, a flamingo. <gasps> now we can finally have some fun. Maybe that's all the potato needed to have some fun, is a pink flamingo. Or, I'm bored. <gasps> the flamingo's bored. Well, maybe now the potato can show the flamingo all the flamingo can do to get out of that bored space. Did you see what the friend did? She did all sorts of imagination, imagination things. She did so many different things to move her body. She did so many things to create and imagine and wonder. So whenever you're in that board space, what could you do? You could jump, you could fly, you could imagine, you could pretend, you could read, you can create. So many things that you can do when you're feeling bored, bored. All right, well, Miss Producer Nate is going to go back to his producer spot because now he's going to turn on his sound effects for our last book of the day. And this is a super silly one. It's called My Daddy 
Daddy, I'm here with you, Daddy. Mommy's down here on your chinny chin chin. Daddy's up here in the brain. Daddy, my daddy snores. Does your daddy snore? Does your grown up snore? Does your mommy snore? Well, this story is about a daddy that snores. And Nate is going to do all sorts of different kinds of snores. So make sure you click in those listening ears. And this is a story by Nancy H. Rothstein. What does the author do, Nate? The author writes the book. Good job. And the illustrator is Stephen Gilpin. What does an illustrator do, Nate? The illustrator draws the picture. Good job. They must have worked together as a beam. Team. As a clean? Beam. As team. a as You a even team. got me doing it. <laughs> I know, right? My daddy snores. On Monday, Daddy Snore boomed like a dinosaur roar. <sighs> the windows rattled. The walls trembled. So, Mommy played musical beds. She left her bed that she shared with Daddy, and she tried sleeping in the baby's crib, but it broke. She tried sleeping in my bed, but I hogged all the blanket. So I don't think she had very good sleep set. Well, on Tuesday, Daddy's snore rumbled like an earthquake. It shook Mommy right out of bed. So, Mommy slept in the bathtub. That could not have been very comfortable. But the faucet dripped water on her head. What sound did that make, Nate? Drip, 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 drip. All night long. That could be a song. Drip, drip, drip. That's drip. right. Drip, drip, drip. On Wednesday, Daddy's snore chugged like a freight train. Chugga, chugga, chugga. <laughs> chugga, chugga, chugga. So mommy slept in my hamster's cage, but she was so squished and it smelled kind of funny. I don't think she had very good sleep that night either. On Thursday, daddy snore buzzed like a bumblebee. What did that sound like, Nate? So, mommy slept in the doghouse. I hope she didn't get cold. But the poor doggy didn't sleep a wink. He howled very, very loudly. I guess he didn't want a bed partner that night. On Friday, Daddy Snore whistled. Like a teapot. That doesn't seem so loud, but I can see how that could keep you up. So this time, Mommy made Daddy sleep in the splishy bowl. In their fish's bowl. <gasps> but even Daddy's bubbles snored loudly. It wasn't really fair to splishy our fish at all. On Saturday, Daddy Snore hopped like a truck. And Mommy had a great idea. She made Daddy sleep in our tent in the backyard. But he woke up all the birds. Tweet, tweet. Then the birds woke us up. It was not a great idea after all. On Sunday morning, Mommy looked like a zombie having a bad hair day. Why? Because she had not gotten good sleeps all week long. No more snoring, she yelled. She took Daddy to the doctor. And the doctor helped 
cure Daddy's storm. On Sunday night, Daddy didn't snore. Our whole house was quiet. Mommy slept. I slept. The baby slept. The doggy slept. The fish slept. And my hamster slept. Until Daddy started talking in his sleep. Thanks, I'd love more ice cream. <laughs> so at least they solved the snoring problem, so now they've got to deal with the daddy talking in his sleep problem. And that can be a problem if it keeps everybody else. All right, friends, before we leave for today, I wanted to tell you two things. Um, first of all, Tomorrow, we're gonna to be working on more bear books. These are the brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? We're gonna be reading those wonderful books. And also, I wanted to leave you with a brand new song that I, that I heard um, that a friend of mine had said to me, and it's about germs and about our cells and our healthy bodies. And it goes like this. <sighs> I'm so happy, every little cell, every little cell in my body is well. I'm so grateful, I'm so happy that every little cell in my body is well. Can you sing that with me? I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy every little cell in my body is well. I hope every cell in your body is well. One last thing. Again, we are still launching our YouTube channel. It's called Miss Kim Storytime. And we are downloading all of our movies, uh, excuse me, all of our videos from Miss Kim Storytime onto that platform so you can enjoy Miss Kim Storytime anytime you like. So please, subscribe. You can do it for free. And then I also wanted to say some hellos to some of our friends out there that have already said, <gasps> Riley said good morning, good morning, Riley. And then look, Grace Kelly's here. Hi, Grace. And then, oh, hi, Tracy. Tracy's here. And then my friend, Kenneth. Oh, Ken, Kenny, Kenneth Rector. And then, hi, Auntie Lynn with JT Hudson and Faith. Hi, hi. And then, oh, hi, Sonia. I hope you brought your kiddos. <gasps> hey, Victor, hi. And then, Abby, I see you, Abby. And then, oh, Uncle Mark, my brother-in-law. And John. Hi, John. Those are all the people who did a quick shout out. And last but not least, I see Charlie and Parker and their grown up Courtney. I'm so glad you all came. Let's go ahead and say goodbye to all of our friends. Goodbye, grown ups. So wonderful to see you, kiddos. We're so happy you came and joined us. We're glad you came to read. We will see you next time. In the meantime, stay happy, healthy, stay healthy, and stay, and stay positive. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Goodbye.